I had to go home and read the stuff three, four, five times. They think I didn't get it. Well, if I did it enough times, I got it. So we, we formed this group. We had input into the show. And uh, we started educating ourselves on how to do radio. So we decided to look at radio in such a way that uh, we use radio uh, to, in a way to educate, to organize, and to mobilize our communities. So we use what I call that, I don't have a thing here, but we use the three. The three in Spanish and English means the tri, the three. The three of the pyramids. If you see pyramids, it has the top and the two sides. The three, the tri. The top of it was radio is going to be used to educate. The side of it, radio, once we educate people, we can organize people. Once people know the problem, they know the issue affecting them, then they can start coming together. Hey, you know what? We need to do this. We need to do that. So radio became a point where we educated, we organized, and then once you got a hint to organize around a problem or an issue, then you can mobilize. Wow, look at this, man. We, we had a meeting. We expected 30 people. 200 came. Yes, so. Then we started mobilizing people to go to the Board of Trustees that dealt with education in schools. We are tired of miseducation or undereducation. And we started packing those halls. And they got scared because they'd never seen so many brown people before. And all of a sudden, we're jamming him in those meetings. Now, everybody there on those panels, those boards, all white. So we said, hey, man, so we started jamming. Well, you know, they started making some change. They started doing policy. They started treating back. So that's how this travel started. In 19... 79 on um, 16 de septiembre, the 16th of September, this is why we're here. Um, I got invited by some gentes from Berkeley. Uh, I'm up myself and my compadre, and uh, Falcón, we're from Sonoma County, up right there, Santa Rosa. We call it Santas. Uh, I got invited by some people that had been up there in the wine country, clicking glass and being bonitos, you know, fancy people, uh, drinking their wines and smelling the bouquet. Well, at that thing, uh, somebody had been listening to the show that we were doing. Cruising, oh, so, vamos aquí, eso, sending your dedicas, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it, uh, it really started to click. And uh, uh, I get a call from uh, somebody from National Public Radio who had been up in the area that weekend, uh, like I said, sampling wine. And uh, one of the guys with a Chicano, uh, I think he might be Hispanic today, but back then he was Chicano. Um, and uh, called me and said, hey man, I was up there with some people at the National Public Radio, and we were listening to the radio and listening to you guys. Well, we'd love to have you come down to Berkeley and do your show there. What? Berkeley? He's not Berkeley. He's Berkeley. You know, hippie town. All the hippies. All the, and, the, and the hippies walk around with their perros and they live with dogs. It's not for us. We said, oh man, but it's also next to the biggest barrio. You know, called Oak Town, Oakland. Oh, yeah, oh, I know Fruitville. So we came. The first show that we did was 31 years ago on the Cisse Setiembre on a Friday. So uh, that's how we started at KPFA. After that show, uh, it was a marathon special, and we didn't come back. Uh, within two weeks, the station is getting called. Hundreds of phone calls. People all mad. Hey, you lied to us. You said you were going to have this low rider show, and all of a sudden it's not on the air. We're giving money, and there's no show. There's no programming for Chicanos. We need to have Chicanos. All of a sudden, the community, we had nothing to do with it. They started jamming the station. You know, we need to have, you know, if we're going to be paying, because uh, public radio is supported by the community, by people's donations or pledges. When all of a sudden, the, they say, hey, man, we're not giving you money. Hey, uh, Gavilan, now you think you might be able to come back and do another show? I came back and did three other shows, once a month. By the end of December, uh, the station at, uh, in Berkeley decided to call me, and they said, hey, uh, we've gotten so much demand, and we're getting so stressed because people are so angry that this isn't a regular show. And in the Latino community, the Chicano Mexica community is the largest in the makes up the Latino community. So can you come out? Would you be interested? We're there. <laughs> so 
So I came in January. The first thing I did is I went up to, walked up to UC Berkeley. I found the machistas there. Oh, really? These are some brown people. Over there. Oh, yeah, we're machistas. Oh, cute, oh, cute, oh. Clicked it with them. And uh, then uh, I talked to the group there. And I said, listen, I come from another, you know, part of the, you know, the Bay Area. And they've asked me to come here to Berkeley, but I don't want to do something without, first of all, letting you folks know that you all need to be involved. I can't do this by myself. Because even when I was doing the show in Santa Rosa, I had a collective. It was LBA, it was the Nose Brown Angels, all my opens. Everybody got to throw the Nika, somebody got to run the board, somebody did the mix. So everybody got to do something. We trained everyone. So when I got to Mecha, they, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, we put together the first crew. Now, that first crew, in my first crew, Mechistas, because I was like the senior, I guess senior, came out, huh? but, but, you know, I was. None of them knew radio, I did. So the first crew that came in, we had uh, a cat named Marco Antonio Fireball, who later became the Speaker of the House of Sacramento to the state legislature. And uh, when he came in uh, for about a year and a half, he did the dedications. You answer phones and do the dedicas. Oh, man. He loved it after a while. But, uh, you know, and his story was he was up at UC Berkeley all bored and to death and scared because he didn't meet nobody. Berkeley, well, you know. He was out of East Los Angeles. So imagine coming out of East Los and all of a sudden you end up in Basurcas, excuse me, uh, in Berkeley, UC Berkeley, with all the fancy rich people and, of course, you know, the privilege. And uh, he was lost. And one night he was, you know, on the radio, what? All these new boys? <laughs> He found out where it was and he just walked down, knocked on the door and he said, hey man, I was on the radio and I was all depressed and then I heard you more and yes, so and orale and come on down and let's go cruising. He goes, hey man, I, I, you know, this sounds like the barrio. Hey, come on. Well, it was. Hey man, I want to hang with you guys. I said, well, listen, hang out with us. So, like I said, he started doing dedications. Years later, he becomes one of the most powerful Chicanos in Sacramento. A year later, he brings another homeboy. His name is John Perez to do the same thing. He was leaving Berkeley, kind of done with taking dedications, and uh, he let John Perez take it. Well, today, John Perez is the Speaker of the House up in Sacramento. In other words, the legislature, which is the equivalent of Congress, it's a Chicano that's in control. It's one of us. So John Perez, back then, his name was uh, El Pantera. <laughs> El Pantera. Okay, dude, you're going to be the Panther, the Brown Panther, you but it worked. So these are the kinds of, now, throughout the years we've had countless people come and in and out of La Onda. And today we're here. We're here for three reasons. One, we're here because it's Latino Heritage Month and Latino Heritage Week. Este mes, nine independences happened. They were sparked by the first independencia, which was the Mexican, the Mexicano independencia against the Spaniards of 1826. And that sparked a flame that crossed through Central and Latin America, South America. So we're celebrating that. We're also celebrating, today is the 31st anniversary of La Onda Bajita. Yeah. We've survived. Don't even begin to take a guess at my age. They'll all be wrong. So um, then at the last point, today is also, I believe, uh, the end of the Mexica calendar New Year. The old year. Mm -hmm. uh, I, well, it will be. I will be corrected. Uh, so that's who we are. Now I'm here. I'm uh, the executive producer. Uh, Norma Labrava uh, has been with La Onda, I guess, as long as Chuch and myself. Uh, we're like the core principales. We've survived what three decades, and here we are. I couldn't have done it without Brava. She's been kind of like the spiritual foundation to La Onda. When we're all getting locotes or angry or just, you know, the rabia or the guerrilleros, she always chills us. Hey, gee, uh, they're sick, not us. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we are sick. Pero uh, Then I got Mr. Chuch. Mr. Chuch has been with me. Híjole, I brought him from Santa Rosa. Uh, I first saw Chuch, six years old. I'm 16, he's six years old. And I saw him on a little, back then, it was called a steam brain. Had a banana seat, 
probably too old for any of you. But he was there. Descalzo, brown little pantalones and no t-shirt. But you know, Mr. Chingon is that mocoso. <laughs> well, now he's almost 50 years old, so he gets to know you how long I've known him. I've known him even longer than he's known himself. Um, and, and I couldn't have done it and kept going without him. Because in this thing, for myself, you know, I came from the rancho. You know, I came as in, you know, when I, when I was uh, uh, going to be six years old, I came from the state of Sonora. So like a lot of you, you know, we're immigrants here. Pero Mr. Chooch, Tejano to the bone, Brownsville, Teca, and here he is. I couldn't do it without him. Uh, so that's the core group. Now, we got other members of the Onda here. We've got uh, Pedro Reyes. He's the uh, co-producer of the Onda. And kind of like a, a live remote, kind of like technical. Uh, that we have on. Uh, we recruited Pedro. We found him, que gracias a Dios, about 11 years ago when he was doing radical pirate radio in the mountains of Santa Cruz, yeah. undetected by federal authorities. Uh, we ran into him. I said, hey, man, you need to come along. He's been with us since. Uh, we got Falcon, uh, who's kind of like our uh, technical uh, consultant, helps us do the technical stuff and the sound and audio person. And uh, a lot of the stuff we couldn't do without him either. Then we got, uh, we got Sochil and Maya in the back there. Uh, uh, Maya's been with us, I guess, on and off for two, three years. Uh, we hooked up with her probably about four, five, six years ago in the anti-war movement. Uh, and we said, hey, we got to catch you. Uh, she brought with uh, her about, uh, I don't know, the beginning early this year, last year, uh, Sochi, uh, who's been an incredible addition to La Honda. It kind of makes us a little more uh, solid. <laughs> and not just, you know, como venga y como vaya, you know. Uh, it's really helped us kind of ground us and keep us a little more focused. And uh, then we have Miguel Perez. Uh, Miguel does a lot of stuff with me. Uh, I guess when I first hit uh, San Fran and Basurpla, excuse me, Basurpla, <laughs> Berkeley, uh, I ran into Miguel I, at a consulate in San Francisco where we're, we're in the protest against the uh, coups in uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and uh, we've kind of been running against each other for years. Uh, a while back, I said, you know what, Tokayo, we've known each other forever. You need to be on the air. I recruited him because Miguel offers something that we really need. Uh, his whole thing that he does is uh, Latin American kind of situations, does the political and social analysis. And I know that might be a lot, but at some point we all have to learn how to do analysis, to look at the situation, study it, take it apart, put it back together, and then fix it. It really helps us, uh, myself, keeping the whole what's happening in Latin America. And Miguel uh, does another show with me called Flashpoints, which is a national program. We were going to be here, but uh, situations happened and couldn't uh, materialize. But he does a segment called Flashpoints in Espanol, which is a national uh, syndicated show that goes out to about 300 different affiliates. And uh, he also does two segments on La Onda. He does Vox Populi. Popular Voice, the first Friday of the month, and he does also uh, Radio Venceremos with a group out of El Salvador from the FMLN. Uh, so that's basically it. Now I'm going to stop talking. Now that I'm saying here, I'm giving uh, Matsatsin a chance to echarse uh, los bocaditos. And I'm going to turn it over to him to talk about what today signifies. And then uh, after he does that, we're all going to take a few minutes, my crew here the staff and the posse, however you want to label us, mm -hmm. uh, to talk about what we all do and why we're here today. Pero uh, Maestro, and uh, I just want to give tres sonadas. The heartbeat, the drum, the circle, which symbolizes the circle of life, La cara de la luna, el sol, el globo planeta, the circle, the sacred circle, the drum beat, los tres sonidos. When, you're, when your heart beats, it beats three times. Tum, tum, tum. Tum, tum, tum. So that's why I resonate the heartbeat. And we do that whenever we're out everywhere because our belief is wherever the drum beats, we shall liberate. And if you listen to La Onda, our show, you'll hear that forever. So, Matatzin, gracias compañero. Gracias, Comarty. Por tenernos aquí. Ya, ya saben.
Thank you very much. 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 Thank Okay, the 5th of September, Independencia, started yesterday, right? Sure. And, uh, and today. And uh, what we found, uh, and the way that I look at, at Raza, at our pueblo, and I'm talking about the pueblo, when I say Raza, I usually mean all human beings in the world. But when I say the pueblo, well, then I'm talking about our pueblo. I'm talking about all the human beings in the world on this Western Hemisphere, you know, indigenous people. So uh, I think Miguel and, uh, and La Onda Bajita is a great example of, that, of those people, mainly for one reason, because 500 years plus, we still got similar problems that we had back then 500 years ago, <laughs> you know, like being chased down and being run over and stuff like that, you know. And in 500 years, what did we learn, más que nada? I think our pueblo in 500 years has learned more than anything else, has learned to suffer. Have learned to suffer and suffer and suffer more, but without fainting. Sufrir sin desmayar. In other they suffered, but they never fainted. You know, get up again and continue. Get up again and continue. So uh, I'm, I'm real honored to be here to be part of this uh, anniversary of this radio that I think is so important. It's been going on forever and it'll continue forever, I believe. And um, but at the same time, uh, I realize that 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 throughout the world. There's a lot of problems, uh, heavy, heavy, heavy duty problems throughout the world. Uh, a lot of hunger throughout the world, like, like never before. And uh, in the face of abundance, you know, in other words, there's so much and it's just not being uh, distributed correctly. A lot of sicknesses, a lot of illnesses all over the world that are really preventable and, and could be cured. Had somebody, did somebody care for someone else? So what I'm finding is that most of the people, we're kind of looking at some of that stuff and looking at the news and hearing it on the radio and watching the paper sometimes, but we think it's somebody else. We think it's somebody else that's hungry. We think it's somebody else that we don't know them. And we don't really feel it yet. Like, no, that's me. Right there. That's me right there. And that, being able to see each other as yourself, that's the key. That's the key. Because uh, it comes called identity. So you can identify. Because I believe that without identity, there's no responsibility. Because you don't identify with issues or, or problems or situations or people. So if you don't identify with them, well, you do the best you can, but you can also forget them pretty easy. So to me, the main thing is cosmic identity, we call it, cosmic identity. An identity that has nothing to do with the color of your skin or your eyes or your hair. An identity doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter who grandma and grandpa was. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. You got money, you don't got no money. In Spanish, we like to say, rico, pobre, judío, jodido, it doesn't matter. Because it's not about religion, it's not about money, it's not about none of that stuff. Identity that's only de determined by one thing, one solid thing. That one thing that I believe that is, is the most common thing that exists. I have found nothing, nothing at all that exists that's more common than that one thing that the identity depends on. And that is time, time. Time is the common, we used to say common denominator until we realized, wait a minute, we're talking about dividing and division. And, wait a second, we don't need a common denominator, something common that divides us all, that we ought to be divided by that thing. <laughs> so no, we realize time is really the common ground. That's what we stand on. That's what we all stand on, on the common ground, right? Like we do here on this common ground. Everybody all over the earth, that's the other thing that we all have a lot in common, we all got to be walking on this. So the common ground is time. So time is real super important. Time is important. And not because it's time and you're late or, or we, we got to get there in time and stuff like that. But mainly because time has an attitude, time has a privilege, and time has a warning. So time, attitude, a privilege, and a warning. And if you learn to realize these capacities of time, then you'll be able to make better use of your own time. So what we're gonna we're gonna do for a few minutes. For a few minutes, I appreciate the opportunity to like to share this.
So for a few minutes, we're gonna go into, into a time, into a space of time. We're gonna open up a space. We're gonna, we're gonna make contact, direct contact with these cosmic energies that are all around us all the time. But we're gonna focus in on them. So for a few minutes, we're gonna become like one person. We're gonna have one thought and we have one heart. And that's a lot to say. And sometimes we can do it, sometimes we think we can do it. But today we're gonna do it. And then you're gonna realize, wow, I've done that before. Yeah, I've been there before. I've done that before. Wow, many times. Especially if you're danzante, you've done it all the time, you know? Okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna face the four corners of the universe, the four directions we call it. And this is not the uh, not the four cardinal points. That's way too small, too elementary for cardinal points. We're talking about the corners of the universe. <laughs> we're talking about the real stuff that's out there. And we're gonna face all the four directions. We're gonna face to every direction, and we're gonna say hello to that direction. We're gonna show respect to that direction, to everything that's around us. Everything that's around us. We're gonna look up, we're gonna look at these lights up here and make them represent the sun for us, who we call him Totatsi, our respectable father, Tonatiu, who carries the, the, excuse me, who brings light and warmth, Donateo, who carries the creating energy of the sun. And we're gonna thank him, because like a good father, he gives light and warmth to everybody, but everybody and every face. And then finally, we're gonna thank the earth. We're gonna come down and touch the ground. If you can't come down and touch the ground, you can put your hands down like that, show a little respect. Because this is our mother. That's where we come from. Our good mother, she takes care of us. She feeds us, she closes us, she houses us all the time, everywhere, everybody and everything that exists on the earth. So for a little while, we're gonna be like one person, with one mind, one heart. And it's gonna be nice, but it's gonna hopefully let you realize that it can be done, that we can put our minds and our thoughts together and just to be uh, respectful to everything that's around us. So, you give enough warning, put your plate down if you'd like to or if you wanna join us. And then uh, we can stand up and we can face to the north, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna follow him. I guess the north is that direction. Okay, we're gonna face to the north. The way we're gonna do this also, in the four corners, in the four directions, there's qualities and energies all around us all the time. But in the four directions that we're facing, I'm gonna start to the north. It's usually a little different than a lot of people do sometimes. But I start to the north because, well, I wanna talk to the qualities and the energies that we call Tezcalipoca. Tesca y Polka. Tesca is, is a, a mirror, and Polka is a smoking of the mirror. So the smoking is your mem remembrance, your, your experiences. Everything that's ever crossed your mind or your heart is still written there in your heart. So we're going to talk to you four Tesca y Polkas. And in the north, the place of the north is called Mik Tlampa. Mik Tlampa. Can you say it? Mik Tlampa. It means a place of silence and transformation. And our companion who guides from that direction is, is Tezcalipoca, and we call him Yayauki Tezcalipoca. Yayauki means the dark one, dark like the night, Tezcalipoca. And he represents, first of all, the beginning of all things, the initiation. Our grandfather says everything began someplace, we don't even know where or when or how, but they had to initiate the beginning, the initiation, and that's a black Tezcalipoca. We face to the north. So to the north, meet Slampa. And, uh, we join us. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the north and all of you just you can just uh, put your put your heart at ease and remember that we're we're in the presence of all the great energy who are part of us. The north is Miklampa. So that's in Miklampa. We thank you for this day. We ask for a lot of energy in this space of learning. And we're going to give to you a little bit of uh, the sound of the drum. And a little bit of the sound of the caracol. Say, you can say 
Este, Tomás Ocamati. Tlauislampa. Say it. Tlauislampa. 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 In this direction is the red Tlauislampa. 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 Red like the fire. And he puts everything in order. Everything in his right space and time. And we thank him. We also know him as Chipe Tote. Totatsin. In Tlauislampa. Totatsin. Tlauislampa. 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 Okay, let's try that again. Three quarters of a turn. And then we will be south. Cool, it was south. Okay, good. We did it. We did it right that time. The sauce is called Wies Lampa. Wies Lampa. The word Wies is, is a thorn. But it's called also the place of, of the will. What makes you move. When you get all the good ideas and you need something that makes you move, that's where it comes from. Wies Lampa. Our guide over here is a blue Tezcalipoca. We call him Shoshoki Tezcalipoca. He's blue like the sky. He's blue like the water. And we also call him Wipsil Poshli. Totatsin in Wislampa. Totatsin Tescalipoca Shushoki. Totatsin Tescalipoca Wislopochli. Tequitlani mea chica walisi, we're qualitonali in Tlamashtiloyan. Thank you, grandfather, for the south. Wislopochli. Make that will in us move to take care of the business that we all need to take care of. Tlas Kamati will give you this drum sounds and the sound of the Karakora, Tercocoli, to let you know that we recognize the need to be filled with your energy in the world to move. Tlaso Kamati. Tlaso Kamati. All right, let's go back to where we started. It's three quarters of a turn. Now we're facing, somebody tell me? West. <laughs> now we're facing west. Again. <laughs> you know, sometimes you say, andamos norteados, I think that time. <laughs> But when we went back, we began the West. The West is called Siwat Tlampa. Siwat Tlampa. The word Siwat is woman, the place of woman, the place of knowledge and wisdom. Somehow our grandfathers really had it together. They knew what was up. Place of knowledge and wisdom. Our grandfather who guides us is none other than the great Quetzal Coat, the White Tezcalipoca, called Istak Tezcalipoca. Remember when we started to the north. That was the beginning of all things, initiation, the black Tezcalipoca. When we went to the, to the, what side did we go after that? We went to the east, the red Tezcalipoca. He put everything in order, everything in order. 
And then we went to the south. The blue Tezcalipoca, which unfortunately, he put everything in motion. Okay, so now we have initiation, order, and movement. Guess what, now we have life. Tezcalipoca Ista, the white Tezcalipoca Tezcalipoca, he brings us life. Because among other things, he represents a hiccup, the wind. Totazin, in Siwatlampa. Totazin, Ista, Tezcalipoca, Tezcalipoca, Tlazo Kamaki, Totazin, and Wekwali Kamaki. The Kutlani, Mia Chikawali Isi, one Wekwali, and Mia Tezcalipoca. Grandfather from the from the West, we thank you for this day, beautiful day. And we thank you, we offer you this drum beats, and this caracol, the sound of the caracol, to let you know and understand that we realize that we need you, precious twin, precious knowledge, precious wisdom of our precious self. And it's a song of gratitude, and it's a song of reclaiming our power, and I feel that it suits Mexican Independence Day, what we do, what we work for every day is to fight for our rights. The indigenous peoples of this earth have had to fight for over 500 years for their rights, and we're still fighting. So it's a very simple song. Um, I'm not exactly sure in, in which dialect it is. 
but you can kind of repeat after me, and so she should come and help me. <laughs> so the song very plainly is, and it's very, very simple, but think of everything that you're grateful for, send it up to the spirits, reclaim what we're, what we're here for, and, and ground ourselves, and, and mother, reclaim our power. The song is, Hey ya, 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 ho. Es todo. Hey ya, 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 ho. Hey ya, 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 ho. Hey ya, 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 ho. So it's important that. We understand vibration. We understand that our energy, what we carry in our mind and in our heart, is the vibration. And the best and clearest form, the purest form of doing that is through song, through an actual vibration through mouth. So I would love if you guys would join me for one round of that prayer and send it up. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Now that we uh, got all ready, ¿verdad? it's about time, like we said. It's all about time. Keep that in mind. It's about time. And that has a whole lot of meaning, ¿verdad? It's about time we did it. It's about time we go. It's about time we thought about it. It's about time. Most everything that you see in our history, like all these images you see up here, all these images up here, it's all about time. It's about time. Unfortunately, all these images, they call them different things. Like they call them gods and they call them... Uh, many, many different things, but except time. They don't realize that our grandfather was talking about time. So this is their way of writing, their way of expressing a piece of time. And each and everything in here is that. So I'm going to step over here and, um, and show you. I'm going to work on this uh, uh, just a little bit so that, so that we can uh, hopefully begin to use the time. Maybe you have to turn the couch around you. Okay. So everybody, but everybody has seen this image. Right? This, this is, uh, does anybody know where the real calendar, the calendar, real calendar is at? In the, uh, in the back. No, the real calendar. It's underwater. The real calendar. In the DF. What do you mean? The punto, what does it mean, DF? El Templo Mayor. El Templo Mayor. Okay, so the real calendar is in Mexico. Mexico City, right? Original name, Mexico Tenochtitlan. The original name of Mexico City. And we, if nobody else, at least should say that and use that term. Describing it, what it is, Mexico Tenochtitlan. It's very super important because it's part of identity. But nonetheless, the original calendar is in Mexico Tenochtitlan. And it's, it's a... About this big, about a little bigger than this, it's 12 feet big, okay? Weighs uh, 24 tons, carved out a piece of rock. And everything that you see on here, everything on here is carved into that stone. Amazing, too, how they, they did it. They don't seem to be no broken pieces, <laughs> no let's do it over. It's done right the first time. But all this, the big giant stone, and they call it, what do they call it? The Aztec calendar, right? Calendaria Azteca, the Aztec calendar. For a long time, in fact, when I began doing my presentations, I would say, let me tell you about the Aztec calendar. And the first thing I gotta tell you, it's not an Aztec calendar. Because from what they were explaining to me, what Aztec meant, it was not that. You know? And it took a long, long time, actually a long time, almost 20 years, till I realized what Aztec means. And when I seen what Aztec means, I go, you know what? Mm -hmm. That is an Aztec calendar. But not how they 
painted to us. Okay? So I'm saying these things because a lot of things that are written down in history are not really the way they appear or the way it really happened. Okay? So we've got two things going on here. We call it his story with two S's. Okay? His story and our story. Okay? And so now we're here to tell our story according to our perception. Better yet, according to our cosmo perception of the ancestors, of the old ones. So the calendar itself, they tell us it was carved in the year 1479. The year 1479, it's not really that long ago. A little over 600 years ago approximately. The card, it was carved in, in the year 1479. In fact, this, this day up here has a number of meanings, but it's also the year 1479. 13 read. These images that you see around here, they come out of our codex, that they call it the Codex Borgia. See? The Codex is an ancient book put together, right, from a long time ago, manuscripts. We call it Huewe Tlatoli. Huewe, viejo, viejo, Tlatoli, palabras. Ancient words lived to us by our grandfathers. Words of guidance. But today, the book itself is in the Vatican. It's been there for a long time. And that's why it's called the, Bo the Codex Borgia. There's other books called the Codex uh, Paris, and get where that one's at. In Paris, in Paris. You know? One called the Codex Dresden, and get where that one's at. In Dresden, in Alemania, right? Germany. So our ancient books, our ancient codices, the original ones that we have, a few left, they're in different parts of the world. You know? Museums, and I'm sure in some private collections also throughout the world. But nonetheless, we have an access to it again, just by the images. So nonetheless, these images, Totally, totally, 100% pre-Hispanic. Okay, totally, without a doubt. At minimum, 1,500 years old. At minimum, 1,500 years ago, our grandfather were painting like this, drawing like this, writing like this. So by the time they put it together in a book, how many hundreds of years did it take for thousands to come up with conclusions? So when you put it together in the book, it's because they were done. They were done with the study. <coughs> They were done with the investigation. It was ready. And that was done a long time ago, 1,500 years ago, at least, minimum. Okay? Now, in the calendar, most of you know, but I'm going to go over it quickly to remind you that we have 20 days in our calendar system. Oh, yeah, by the way, one more thing, important. This calendar system, everybody knows it is the Aztec calendar, they call it, but they also call it the Mayan calendar sometimes. And you ever go online or see these programs that talk about my encounter and poof, they pop this one up también. So in essence, it is the same thing. But yet when they speak, they don't want to talk to Aztecs, they want to talk about Mayan thing. But it's the same thing. So this right here, the system, it runs on 20 day cycles. These are the days right here, 20 days, 20 day cycles. Every square is a day. There's 24 hour periods in each one of the little squares. These little squares and these symbols, is going to change, not what they look like or what they represent, but the amount of time that they represent. Like right now, they're representing 24 hours. I'm pointing out to you, 24 hours. But they also are right here in these little images you can see up here. There's all the day signs all around. You can see these right here, these four that I'm pointing to. Those are day signs. But here, guess what? They don't represent a day. Here they represent minutes. That should represent 18 minutes apiece. A lot of time. So we have 80 pieces of 18 minutes in a day. That's a lot of time we have in a day. You can figure out how to do 80 things, you know? Because you got a lot of time in a day. You think you run out of time most of the time. Okay? But at the same time, these little pieces that you see right here, they also represent a bigger piece of time. They represent the full size, which is 72 minutes. So each one of the little day signs, symbols, they also represent 72 minute pieces of time. And when you put 72 minutes behind each one of these, or represent each one of these, you go around this whole circle and you got 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing, it's a clock. It's a clock, and, and the images, these images that are right here, which are these ones right here, these ones, the big ones, with the four underneath, there's 20 of them. These are three pages out of the ancient codex. In three pages, these images are right there. And those three pages is one day. So that's one day. And it repeats itself. 
It goes on and on, over and over and over and over again. Okay? Just like the earth turning and moving around the sun. Okay? So, one last thing about these guys, insiders. They also represent 1,300 years. There was a 1,300 years of peace. These little guys. Right? And when you multiply them, what do you get? 13,000 years and 13,000 years on this side. So you have here 26,000 years on the stone. So it goes from 18 minutes to 26,000 years on the stone. Okay. Now, these are the last things that we found that we've been working with. Probably, actually, actually since 2001, we've been working on this on this particular project. So it took us 10 years, but we barely finished this year in February. You know? It took us 10 years to, to come up with the way it looks here today. Our main goal and our main objective is to show and to prove that it is a real calendar system and you can move and walk on it on a daily basis. To show and prove that it's also a clock and it's got certain times. During the day, there are times for creativity, activity, reflection, activity and creativity, right there, six hours. And the same thing, creativity, activity, reflection, activity, creativity, and it repeats itself. So during the day, there are times specifically good for creativity, creative things. There's times specifically for activity, do certain projects, certain movements. And then there's times, very special times, for reflections. When we should go inside at least a little while and close your eyes and look inside and put things together. And you come out and get into activity. <coughs> We've taken that, that capacity of measuring this time and moving it. We put it to work in a couple of schools. Uh, the first one that we did it on was, was a kindergarten school. Kindergarten was little four or five year old kids. And we showed them how to use those times of creativity, activity, reflection. Those, those little kindergarten children, when they go to the first grade, the teacher totally freaks out. Because they're totally <coughs> capable of understanding and moving the, the system of, of the education. Second grade, the same thing. Third grade, the same thing. In the fourth grade, we only spend a couple of weeks with them showing them some of these things. And then the teacher, throughout the, the rest of the year, we're reminding them. But in Mexico, you, you might know on a day like today, especially a day like today, like yesterday, they're doing a lot of uh, Mexicanos a grito de guerra, right? You know, the National Council of Mexico, you know? And in Mexico, when you go to school, that's the first thing you say in the morning. The first thing you, you go see the bandera, you gotta you know, say hello to the bandera, you know? And, and uh, but these kids, these children, what they would do before they went inside the classroom, they say hello to the sun and to the four directions, the four corners of the universe. And then they wouldn't say hello to the bandera, que hule bandera. Because first thing first. You know? So they were taught to be in harmony and to be like one person. Right now, what we did right now for a little while, we taught like one person for a little while at least. We face and show respect to everything around us. The energies give life and where we come, and, you know, come from and go to when we're done on this earth. So it was all about coming together. We did it also in a high school in New Mexico. Actually, it was a junior high school, and, and uh, what do you call it, a charter school. The teacher was a biology teacher, not Chicano studies or Indian studies. Biology, straight up biology. And she did it in her class using this system, creativity, activity, reflection. She told me that she gave upper division laboratories to those incoming students. And each and every one of them just flew over it. But you know what, they didn't go by themselves. Everybody got together, worked like a team, and they all went over. And there was no much, too much, not a lot of distance between what one and the other, because they became a family. They became a family around time that they were contemplating on. So these little guys, they're around a long time. And you can see they're all over the place here. They're all, all over the place. Today, uh, when I made the phone call to try, when I was invited to come here, I really appreciate it very much. And when I made the phone call to my hermano mayor to let him know we're coming, maybe in the phone I kind of made it sound wasn't very clear. But I did tell him that we were in the, in the cause it was yesterday, I said, we're in the day of the rabbit. I go, and it's one rabbit. I go, and it is the last 13 day cycle. Okay, so, so it's the last 13 day cycle of a 260 day cycle that began, well, Almost, I guess, 200 and something days ago. If you look down here, and these squares that are here, these squares 
These are the 13 day cycles. They're the days. Look at this 13 days. See? It begins over here because there's a crocodile. The crocodile runs up into the reed. So here's the crocodile right here. And it goes 13 days to the reed. The next day is Jaguar. And then he'll be number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen to the skull. And he's over here. Here's the jaguar. And he's right there, and here's the skull. Then after the skull is a deer. And here's a deer. Right here. Then a rabbit, and it goes all the way to the rain. So here's a deer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's the rain. This is flower. You see the sequence? Total same sequence. We're walking on this ancient calendar, and we're walking on this calendar. In other words, it's always been there. If you have a chance to look at ancient books, ancient books, all our ancient books, one thing for sure, it's going to be full of days and day signs. It's all about time. Can you explain the symbolism behind the Jaguar crocodile? Okay, I'll go into the symbolism of the days. I'll keep that in mind in a minute, and then I'll jump into the, in the symbolism of the days. The Jaguar, the crocodile. Now, you, you, see, how the, you see how it moves this direction, counterclockwise? It's going counterclockwise. But, if you start right here, number one, crocodile, 13 days later, it'll be one jaguar. 13 days later, it'll be one deer. 13 days later, it'll be one flower. 13 days later, it'll be one reed. And 13 days later, it'll be one serpent, and it keeps going again. So now, not only is it going in this direction, but it's also going in that direction, too. So at the same time, it's moving in both directions. And there's many things like that in our culture. That's a duality, where things can appear to be different. And not the same, but duality doesn't mean that you look just like me. Duality means that we make a compliment, we compliment each other. And that's what duality is about. The most important duality that we need to know and always keep in mind is that we are, as individuals, an individual, but we're also part of the whole. We're part of everything that exists. So we're an individual and we're cosmos at the same time. And that's a big duality. Okay? We've got to keep that in mind. So. And we walk on this, on this 13, uh, 13 days, 13, 13, 13, we walk on all the 13 days. Today, we're on this day of the water. Yesterday was day one rabbit right here. So look up here. Here's a rabbit. And right there's the water next to him, number two. Two water today. So we're on this very last day. Rabbit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And it ends. The next day will be one again, one crocodile. Whenever the crocodile and the number one come together, we begin a new cycle. Some of you have been fortunate enough to be invited to, uh, to uh, these Mayan ceremonies that have been going around here for quite a while. There was one not too long ago, probably uh, uh, early July. Does anybody take a look at Venus? Like to look at Venus now and then? No, and right now it's not visible. Right now, in July it disappeared. It disappeared. It disappeared. Went down. It was a morning star. But I start. I was watching them. I like. I get up in the morning. I was watching them. I was finally getting closer and closer to the sun. Closer to the sun. So we can't see them no more. We got to go for almost 90 days. It disappears. And then it's gonna appear boom as a evening star. Okay. Well, the morning star. We call them Tlawis Kalpantikuti. Tlawis means light. Kal, house, pants, on the top of the world. When the light comes up, the sun comes up. That is Venus as a morning star. And the evening star we call them Sholo Tikuti. Sholo means companion. Companion of the sun. When he's an evening star. But he's the same one, brother. Right? Well, he's like a twin. Right? He's got, he appears this way and he appears that way. So he's a twin. And the twins are called what? Kowat. Or... Coate, ¿verdad? Que raza, coate. That's where the word comes from, coate. Eh? Somos coates. And what's a coate? Besides, we say twin, but it means my buddy, you know? My partner. My partner. In fact, more than a brother, that's my other self. My homie, exactly. That's my other self. In Maya, we say, in Lakesh, eres mi otro yo, you're my other me. A la que, I'm the other you. you know? So that is the law of the land. That is the law of the cosmos. That is a law of duality, that you're my other me, we complement each other. Okay? So, on this day, that we're on the day of the water, number two water, we only got 11 more days, and then this cycle ends. 
I talk about those Mayan ceremonies. A lot of times people think that they're doing a, uh, what do you call it, they're doing a new year. In fact, every time the Mayan light a fire, they're, oh, they're doing a new year. <laughs> Everybody thinks that's a new year. But if you listen to the viejos, they're going to tell you, we were here nine months ago, you know, and we're here again. So they're following the movement of Venus. Okay? they got to keep that movement going or recognizing its cycles. Okay? So, but when this nine months ends, we begin again the crocodile, a new 260-day cycle. They used to call it the sacrificial calendar. In fact, they still do in some of the books. But we know there's a life calendar. Because that's how much time a human being is inside his mother's womb. For 260 days to 273 days, that is nine months. And then the child is born. While he's in the mother's womb, he is traveling in 13-day cycles. According to the first guide of the day, he'll be guided by the crocodile, then he'll become a jaguar, then he'll become a flower, then he'll become a deer, and he goes like that. So he got all these qualities. And then when the time comes to be born, when he first comes out, descend from his mother's precious womb, in that instant, here comes the wind. And that's who? Quetzalcoatl. And that's why we say Quetzalcoatl gives me life, because he is the wind himself. So in that instant, when that child takes his first breath of life, you know, little bitty mouth like that, one right there. You know, and he breathes in all these qualities over here. All these energies, the far top of the sun, all that came into that little being. And all those qualities. And imagine that. All that potential, huh? On a little bitty baby like that. And they would name you according to the day that you were born on the calendar. Because they knew that behind that symbol, there was another symbol. Like for example today, the rabbit. Well, he's got another companion. It's a maguey plant. Or well, like the agave cactus, but this is a different kind of maguey, right? The, the water today, has got a companion, shoot the kuti. Tomorrow, the day of the dog, has got a companion, mitlan tikuti. The next day, the day of the monkey, has got a companion, toshipili, which is photosynthesis. The next day, malinali, the herb, got a companion, ateca, the one that cured with plants. So every day has a bigger companion. This companion, the guides of days, they call it ilwika po simply. Ilwika, cosmos. Po simply, po, companion. Simply, respectable cosmic companion. Super, super important. We never heard about them. They never told us about them. They showed us pictures and called them gods and devils and boogeymen. But we never heard about them. Well, in reality, the day signs, the day signs themselves, they are the mission of time what time will accomplish, and they pin it on like this, like today, the day of the water. A mission that they has, but the companions that guide them, this is the potential and the capacity that exists in that piece of time in which you got to do this work. So it's super important that we start learning these companions that exist in every piece of day, okay? Now, we're pleased that you got a few minutes left, but I don't want to take all of your time, of your important work here. I'm gonna go through the days real quick, in fact, Join, join me real quick, so you will hear them. And like they said, the vibration is so important that your voice makes noise, okay? And that your heart hears it. Because you're gonna be waking up a lot of precious energies inside you. So let's, let's you wanna name the day signs? Look at here, okay, okay, then listen to the rest of us. The first one is called Sipakli. Sipakli. Oh, the rest of you like, on his side? Come on. Sipakli. There you go. Ekat. Ekat. Kali. Koespali, Kowat, Mikistli, Masa, Toshtli, At, Isquintli, Osomatli, Malinali, Akat, Oselot, Kwautli, Koska Kwautli, Olin, Tekpat, Kiawit, Shoshi. 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 Not Soshi, but Shoshi. Shoshi. Don't change the name of it, Shoshi. Shoshi. It's real important. The X is like an S-H, Shoshi. Like Mexico, they don't speak like. Okay? You just name the 20 days of the calendar. Okay? All of these days and all these signs, <laughs> you walk through those 13 days, taking all those people in. I mean, all these qualities in, in every one of us. Okay? But I'm going to finish off and say this one last thing for now. It's not a nasty thing. It's not a Mexican thing, right? Because it wasn't made only in Mexico and by Mexicans. It was, con it was put together by the whole continent. Not one person, but thousands and thousands of people worked to put this together. 
across thousands and thousands of miles, the whole Western Hemisphere. So we get information from the top of the world, Alaska to the bottom of the world, and we have countless systems. And by thousands of people. It all came to culminate in Mexico City, Mexico Tenochtitlan. When they founded Mexico Tenochtitlan in the year 1325 as the headquarters of the Confederation of the Eagle and the Condor coming together. So, my last thing I'll say, is that I say it's not an Aztec thing, or Indian thing, or Mexican thing, it's a human thing. Okay, a human experience towards personal transcendence. We can transcend even the color of your skin, even your language, even, even what people think you are or, or, or can become, right? Because the word Aztec comes from the word Astli, Astli, and that's an instrument to harmonize. An instrument to harmonize, Teca, the person who becomes that instrument. So when our grandfathers came to the conclusion of what you're looking at here, called the Aztec calendar, then they became Aztec. Because then they became instruments of harmony. And people were becoming the deer, the rabbit, the water, and you're part of everything that surrounds you. So keep that in mind. We get some material here in case somebody's interested and wants to take some material. So you can start, continue to work and walk on this calendar system. I think it's very important that we bring back our capacity to walk on the system. The crocodile is the beginning of all things, the initiation, boom. And if someone is born that day, he's got those qualities, potential capacities. The jaguar, more than anything, is a listener, represents the, the, the ear to listen. Also, it's an audacious and tenacious guy. Now, he don't get bothered by the small stuff, but if we want something, that's mine, go after it. So, everybody knows what these symbols are and what they represent. Simple, simple things. They don't got to be too complicated. Uh, too com yeah, they're complex, but not complicated. So we're going to stop right there for now, but let you know that you are part of this calendar system. You know? Each and every one of us, because we took the breath of life and we came into this. Okay? Azteca, instruments to harmonize. Okay? Olmeca, Olin, Movimiento, and Mecate, those who began to tie the movement of time. Torteca, the builders who build with those measurements to precision, to become precise. Not perfect, but precise. In other words, a little bit more, just try a little harder like you are, because you are Torteca all the way, you know? Because you never are satisfied with second best or the best, you know? So Torteca means exactly that. One who is never satisfied with mediocre. Just try a little bit better. And if you know you give it the best you could, you know? That's Torteca. And then Maya, you know, it's not necessarily a people, a nation. It's mainly a net that holds things together. And that's why they put the time from the beginning of this cycle to 2012, December 21st, the new cycle begins. Okay? And then finally, Aztec. Instruments of harmony. So hopefully, we can someday become Aztecs. Thank you very much. Oh, question? Okay. Thank you very much. The earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. Earth, wind, fire, and water. And the tongue is like a stick butt. He's saying, if you want to have life, respect the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. Oh, oh, right here. Right here. Right here? Oh, yeah, yeah. There are two serpents, and their mouth is open, they got faces coming out of there. And their tongues are touching. Right here. Yeah, one is light, one is dark. That's the duality. So there's got to be a light. So there's got to be a complement. Okay? Represent Tezcalipoca and Quetzalcoatl, which are the two branches of our knowledge, or our ancient wisdom would be everything that gives life, like the wind, the sun, Tlaloc, everything is part of Quetzalcoatl. But Tezcalipoca is everything that is space, like space between us, space in the cup to drink, space out there, and everything internally. Okay? So, thank you very much. Yeah, my question will be here for a little bit longer, and whatever we can do to, to help you, you know. I, uh, I do want to say that, on, like I said, on this day, remember one thing. Que dicen en México, que la revolución no terminado. Okay? The revolution has not finished yet. But to me, we put it this way. Before we can complete that, we need to become re-evolutionized. So now we want to be re-evolutionaries, okay? Not revolutionaries. And we don't necessarily want to call it, and we're going to be, you know, guerreros. Let's, let's, let's put the war aside, leave it for George and those guys. You know, we want to be guardianes. We want to be protectors, okay? So let's not be guerreros that we're going to be fighting with everybody around us all the time. Let's be guardianes. 
and to put our heads and our hearts together with others and find the best way to protect and respect everything that's around us. Lasso Kamati, we met. Thank you, Matsasin, for the quick uh, reflections and information education. Uh, some of you might ask, you know, why did we, why did I invite Matsasin uh, to talk about the calendario, to talk about Azteca Mexica? Uh, our show is called Radio de Barrio Aslan. And, uh, you know, we start off uh, from a spiritual place. We embraced the plan of Aslan way back, you know, in the late 60s, when a poeta and organizer activist named Alurista kind of put it together in his mind. That was the basis for the beginning of Mecha. It was the basis for the beginning of the Bramble race. And so we embraced that. We've been criticized, attacked, accused of nationalism, et cetera, et cetera, because we refuse to back away from Aslan. Well, Aslan is what we consider now uh, modern day southwestern United States. And we call it occupied America. It's occupied by the U.S. Calvary, excuse me, uh, not Calvary, uh, U.S. government for the meantime. But as we've seen, the Raza in our population has gotten from 6 million in the 1950s to close to 55 million today. Now, if we as a people join forces with the other communities of color, our African American brothers and sisters, all of a sudden we're over a hundred million people. If we join forces with all people of color in this country, there's probably about 130 million of us. We got the power to change this government. We got the power to change the whole structure. And at some point we're going to need to unify our communities because the white power structure does not want to share, does not want to share, you know, its power, its decision making, its resources. So, mire, we're five minutes away from Nando Bajita. I need Maya and uh, Sochi on the table. We're getting ready here. Um, I just want to say uh, we'd like to come back in the future, and we'd like you to all pack the house because what we bring you, you're not going to listen. You're not going to get anywhere else. Uh, myself, in some ways, I'm still a guerrillero. The kind of radio we do is called kind of guerrilla radio. We are radio activists, but we're also organizers. We also belong to foundations, committees, organizations. We all bring something to the table. And our whole purpose here, like today, we started with ritual. People say, why do you play the drum? Why do you say prayers? Why do you chant? Because it is through ritual and ceremonial that we're able not only to reclaim, but reaffirm our indigenous roots. Okay? This continent was not Christian. And most of us, of the communities of color, were never Christian. We became Christian through the whip, being burned at the stake, being worked to death by the sword and the cross and the whip, we were made to be Christians. And most of us, Catholics. All the gold that was stolen from the Americas and the silver, the gold from Mexico and the silver from Sur America, helped build Europe to what it is today. If we had the gold they stole from us and we had the silver, guess what? We would be a world power. But they took all of that from us. And now we've been reduced to slaves. Working class and poor working people. That has to change. So we did. We got a few minutes before showtime. I don't know if you're all interested, but this is how we do radio. We come out in the community and we engage you. So I'm going to get on here and open up the show. We we'll invite you to stay and check it out. And by the end, if you like what you see, we'd like to invite you about how you can become a radio. Because radio is the way we organize, we educate, and we mobilize our people. It's the only means we have to fight back in the system. Because they've taken everything away from us. So, mire, a few minutes before, and then we're going to start the show. So, I'm going to get a chair here. Special thanks to our production and technical team, the members of First Media, Group 36. We are Maruka, Katie.
Lila LaFleur and Aqualite. Our executive producer is Miss M. Our technical mm -hmm. director is Freewheel and Franklin. Our intro music is produced by Source of Labor, and our outro music is produced by Keith Andre. If you have any questions or topics for future shows, give us a call at 510-848-6767, extension 627. Send an email to firstvoicemedia at kpsa.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash firstvoicemedia, and follow us on Twitter at firstvoicemedia. With the floor holding down the controls, thank you, Lafleur. We've been your host, Katie and Aquila. Thanks for joining us tonight on Full Circle. Stay tuned for La Que se viva, viva México, viva México, viva México. Palooza, a wild celebration of animals need, that gets uh, closer bit. to nature than ever before. One day only, Saturday, September 24th, from 11 to 5 p.m. at Fort Mason in San Francisco. Hands-on encounters with insects, reptiles, birds, mammals, and marine life from around the world. You'll have the chance to hug a hedgehog, pet a python, hold a beaver, and chill out with a ring-tailed lemur. Childlife activities include wildlife origami, insect mask making, and opportunities.